We will praise the one between, within, and over. Our hope is in the one who creates expansive love, calling us to do the same. Follow the one who never breaks covenant. We will follow the one whose extravagant love calls us to co-create justice for the oppressed, feed the hungry, unlock prisons, and welcome strangers, orphans, and widows. We praise the spirit that spans the ages. Amen. As you are able to stand, let us sing, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 66. be seated. Let us join together in our unison prayer saying, God help us to change, to change ourselves and to change our world, to know the need for it, to deal with the pain of it, to feel the joy of it, to undertake the journey without understanding the destination, to learn the art of gentle revolution. Amen.
Thank you. Prayer probably begins at its best with just silence, which means getting rid of all the noise in our heads, which is probably hard. So in the best way we can, let us get rid of the noise in our heads and just be silent. Oh God, we give you thanks for all the ways we come and go as a church. On the days we gather here, it is very good to be together to worship you, even in the knowledge that others are with us whom we cannot see and are yet a part of us. And others who worship as a part of us in other locations through the week. Then Lord, as you have directed us when we scatter, as someone said, we remain the church in service and in prayer. Part of the good news of all of this is that while we are not always together, Lord, we are never alone. You are always with us. Whether we always feel it deeply or not, you are there. Sometimes I think you are there through the scriptures and sometimes in the Holy Spirit. I know people who talk about being aware of you in nature. Maybe I think it's the beauty or the stillness or a sense of all creation. And sometimes, Lord, there's just this strong sense of your presence. You remember John Wesley felt his heart being strangely warmed. I guess you show up in our lives in all kinds of different ways. Maybe when and how each one of us needs you. Thank you. The older I get, Lord, the more I think about my sins, past and present. And I feel everything from embarrassed to frustrated to guilty to all kinds of things. I wonder if others do too. Thank you for forgiving us. Help us to accept your forgiveness and to forgive others. And finally, Lord, we pray for any and all here and everywhere who are sick or hungry, sad or lonely, fearful or hostile, and may we not only pray, but also move our very, our very beings to be of help as well. And now as we come back together, Lord, let us pray together what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to all of you this morning and to those watching us via OLN. It's so good to be gathered together. This is a church in mission. 
and a busy church. But there's no group any busier right now than the United Women in Faith. Yesterday, they, they hosted a district meeting here of United Women in Faith with the district superintendent present here. And as you turn to the back of your bulletin, you'll see that they're still busy. United Women in Faith, on October 9th, in the Philippi Room, they're having a couple of group meetings. The first in the afternoon at 2.30, and then in the evening at 7. And the thank offering for mission work will be taken. And they are always involved in mission. And then also take note that they will be on October 15th leading the service here and Marsha March will be the speaker. And they will share all about their ministry and invite others to be involved. But their numbers are increasing. They're, they're attracting new people and we are excited about that. I'm getting used to their new designation, you know, United Women in Faith. Actually, I think it's a good thing because it's not as confusing to outsiders. I remember uh, some years ago watching a news report. A state senator who was campaigning saw this ad for a UMW meeting in a church here in the area. So he called the, the local reporters and said, would you be there and cover my talk to them, my campaign speech? So he arrived and the reporters were there and as he entered the room, I'll never forget, as they filmed the shock on his face when he saw all those women because he thought it was a meeting of the United Mine Workers. <laughs> Well, there's much less confusion with United Women in Faith, and it really says what the women are about, and it's faith, and making that faith real in everyday life. Two other things of note. Uh, the quarterly memorial service will be coming up here in the multipurpose room chapel at September 30th, that's Saturday at 10 a.m. And again, all of you are invited to that, but it's a time to remember those who have passed in the previous quarter. Also, I am aware keenly this morning of the church in mission because as I came in, there were cereal boxes popping up everywhere. I, I came into the church office and there was a box of Special K red berries on the desk. One of my favorite cereals. But whoever gave it, don't worry, I didn't open it. It was tempting though. But, but again, thank you for your ongoing thought of the various missions that this church supports and the celebration of that, the kickoff as it were, and it, it does start with a kick, with the cereal boxes lined up, creating a domino effect will be October 30th. So those are the, the highlights of what is coming up. And I will now ask the ushers to come forward to receive our offerings. <coughs>
O oh Lord, you bless us with your nurturing spirit each and every day, bringing comfort, peace, and meaning to our lives. And so we offer these gifts with grateful hearts, and may they be used in the spirit of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. You may be seated. For the scripture readings this morning, I'm going to turn to the book of Psalms and then Proverbs, beginning in Psalms with chapter 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And turning to Proverbs chapter 3, beginning with verse 1 through verse 6. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and of man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My wife knows that I'm a procrastinator. And she's here this morning, so I have to tell the truth. <laughs> and the truth is she likes to have decorations assembled and organized and plenty of time for the holidays so that everything is ready to decorate when the holidays do arrive. And so knowing that I procrastinate, she always asks me about this time to go down to our storage room in the basement to begin the process of retrieving and assembly. While I was down there, first of all, as I opened the door, it is so full of stuff, <laughs> I gasp. And then I start trying to retrieve the Halloween Thanksgiving, and Christmas decorations. 
In the midst of doing this, I found the nativity scene, but as I pulled out all the pieces and started assembling them in their correct positions, I noticed that two of the pieces were missing. It was a shepherd and a wise man. And I searched and searched, opening box after box, of which there were plenty, as I mentioned, but they were not to be found. And I felt unsettled because the nativity set especially had been with us for many years. And there were so many memories, so many Christmases associated with it. And it was incomplete. And I wanted it to be complete. But as I sat on the floor next to all the boxes, I pondered something. That this is a reflection of the way life is, a symbol, if you were, that life so often seems incomplete with missing pieces to our lives. Wonderful would-be parents are unable to conceive a child. Fervent prayers in the oncology ward seem to go no higher than one's head. The ones who are right and true and color within the lines sometimes don't see their plans come to fruition. And we remember how it was with COVID. Separation from loved ones, as excruciating as we could imagine with, with them being beyond our touch, our lives incomplete. But as we are aware of missing pieces, it's helpful for us to think about all of the pieces to our lives that have been given to us, that provide guidance, confidence, hope, and meaning, often in the darkness. And these pieces often are just given to us in a very unexpected way. And most often we can identify that as God's grace. God's grace to give key pieces to our own personal life to assemble. One of my favorite books of all time is written by Rabbi Howard Kushner. It's entitled, Living a Life That Matters. And he has so many powerful images in this book, so many wonderful stories. And he writes about what the missing pieces of our life are like. In fact, how all the pieces are. He, he writes, each lifetime is the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. For some, there are more pieces for others, the puzzle is more difficult to assemble. But know this, you do not have within yourself all the pieces to your puzzle. And everyone carries with them at least one and probably many pieces to someone else's puzzle. And when you present your piece, which may be worthless to you, to another, whether you know it or not, whether they know it or not, you are a messenger from the Most High. Yes, we all have missing pieces, and none of us have all the pieces to our lives. I want to share a, to share a story of two women who did not have all the pieces to their lives. In Anaheim, California, Mavis Jackson drove past the Crystal Cathedral. For 20 years, she said the same thing when she drove by. Someday I'm going to go there. One Sunday morning, she did. Putting on her best outfit, she simply decided today is the day. So getting there early, Mavis took a seat in the middle and watched the huge 3,000 megachurch come to life and fill with people. She was awed 
at the majestic voices of the choir. At the end of the service, Mavis stood up and waited for the aisle to clear. Trying not to sound too excited, she said to the young lady who'd been seated next to her, I'm so glad I came today. Wasn't it wonderful? The young woman nodded. Are you from here? asked Mavis. No, the response came. I'm from the Midwest. And the young woman added, I'm actually here on a mission to find my mother. There was a pause. I know how you must feel, said Mavis. A long time ago, I had to give up a little girl for adoption. I didn't want to, but another pause. The young woman looked deeply into Mavis's eyes and she said, do you remember her birthday? Yes, said Mavis cautiously, October 30th. That's my birthday, gasped the young woman. They sat down. The young woman introduced herself as Cheryl Wallace. She explained that for years, she had been haunted by the lingering uncertainty of not knowing who her birth mother was, and more importantly, why she had given her up. She also went on to say that a suggestion from someone who thought she'd once heard that Cheryl's birth mother had moved to Orange County, Orange County, California, led Cheryl to this place and to this church. But even on her most optimistic days, Cheryl never could have forecast such a remarkable outcome in a manner that only God could have made happen. And when they confirmed that their wonderful miracle was true, that they were long lost mother and daughter, they knew that Mother's Day would never be the same again. Mother and daughter had been found. Cheryl had stepped out in faith, and God guided her to find the most important missing piece in her life, her birth mother. And what an unusual, unexpected way that that happened. It is the truth of Proverbs manifested in life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Oh, he made Cheryl's path straight and Mavis's too when he brought them together. But just as we think about the missing pieces in our lives, we sometimes are given pieces we can't use or we don't know, at least at the moment, how to use them. My mother experienced that and it had something to do with me. So this is kind of a confession, but you're good listeners. Several years ago, I was in my mother's assisted living apartment, gathering some clothes to take her when she was in the hospital. I opened the top dresser, the top drawer of her dresser. And as I opened that top drawer, I was astonished. For there in that drawer were at least a dozen bottles of perfume. And as I began to look at them and examine them, and, and they were all different, they were no two alike, and, but the other thing was that none of them had been opened. And in my astonishment, my mind went through several possibilities, and then it hit me. And boy, did it hit me. 
These were the perfumes I had given my mother at Christmas or birthday gifts over a period of years from college on through graduate school and seminary. I was puzzled and pondered all of this as I left her apartment and going down the hall where I met her nurse aide who recognized me and actually asked me how my mother was doing in the hospital. And after we talked about that, I told her about my surprise at opening that top drawer. And to my surprise, she said, oh, that. Your mother told me about that once when I was helping her get dressed. As we opened some drawers to pull out some clothes, one of them was full of perfumes, as you said, and that astonished me. But in a delightful tone, your mother explained to me that you had given these to her on special occasions, but she couldn't use them because she was allergic and they gave her migraines. Well, I felt a sadness about this. But the nurse aide said to me, oh, don't be sad. She said, your mother didn't want to tell you. She was sensitive to your feelings and wanted to accept your gift graciously. It was your thought that was important to her. And, and she said this, Gifts of candy are soon gone, and clothing wears out. But this I will always have as memories of my son. I felt that this aid at that moment was surely one of God's angels. And she was giving me a piece, a piece to my life from my mother from the Most High. It all reminded me that my mother was always a gracious woman. And it reminded me of all of the pieces that she had given me to my personal puzzle. My mother died shortly after that happened and I grieved and I grieved and I was aware that there would always be an empty chair at Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, all of the many ways in which she was always present and there for me in my life. No, God couldn't fill the empty chair, but in creating and giving me such a wonderful memory about my mother, that memory that surfaced as we the nurse aide and I both had opened that top drawer. Through that memory, God brought healing into my heart. He was helping me put the pieces together in a new way, a different way. And in that way, I felt even more the closeness of Christ and his walk with my mother through the years and also with me. No, sometimes we cannot retrieve what we have lost, what is missing, or attain a dream that has been the central piece of our puzzle. But in the midst of our disappointment, he calls, reminding us we are not alone, saying, trust in me with all your heart. Some of us come into this sanctuary in person or via OLN with a missing piece or many missing pieces to your puzzle. Maybe feeling fragmented inside or alone or separated from a meaningful community. Some of us have been given a piece we don't know how to use or understand how it fits in the puzzle. And sometimes we are just left with the mystery, not knowing how it is all going to turn out or what that puzzle is going to look like. But I pray that you have come here this morning too with hope, 
with an expectation that here you will find help in putting together, putting together the scattered pieces of your life, that here you will find the pieces to the next chapter of your life. Or that here you may find that you are a missing piece to someone else's life. And sometimes, as Howard Kushner says, we give a piece to someone else without even realizing it. We, and we don't know how important it is. There's a wonderful young man at Lebanon Ford by the name of Chad. He's a service advisor there, and I see him quite frequently with my old Mustang. Oh, he keeps it filled with the right fluids and keeps the right shoes on it. You know, not horseshoes, but the brake shoes I'm talking about. But he's a wonderful young man who treats all of his customers like gold. And he's one of those people that goes the extra mile. But Chad has lost so many important pieces to his life in the last year. He lost his father, and then his wife within a year. And, and Chad has a very stressful job. And this one day when I was there, he was having a really rough day. I could see it on his face, and when I asked him how he was doing, he said, it's been tough. And then he did something surprising. As he was checking me out, he opened the drawer to his desk and he pulled out this beautiful card and he handed it to me. And he said, open it and read inside. It was a beautiful card and I opened it and I started reading it and it was beautifully written and it was full of encouragement and affirmation for the special thing that, that Chad had done for this person. So I, I read through it and then I looked at the signature at the bottom. It was Barbara Patterson. And Chad said to me, I keep this in my drawer because he said so many times on a bad day, I pull this out and I read it and it keeps me going. Oh yes, sometimes when we think we're giving a small piece to someone, to them it's a big piece. And I, I know God has something to do with that. He takes that small piece and he makes it big for somebody. And sometimes it's just in small things there's something miraculous happens that I know you probably didn't anticipate, Barbara, that your card would be so important to this young man. It wasn't just a passing thing, but something he's held on to. Yes, what can happen to us and our community and even the community beyond Otterbein to bring the puzzle pieces together? But we can start by trusting in the Lord with all our hearts and leaning not on our own understanding, in all ways acknowledging him, and he will make our path straight. Cheryl Wallace was at the Crystal Cathedral on that fateful Sunday morning because she stepped out in faith back when she was in her hometown in the Midwest, not knowing with any certainty. She stepped out in faith, trusting with all her heart. I know you are here this morning too, not only because you may have some missing pieces or because you want to give some pieces to others, but you're here also because you stepped out in faith many times in your lives. I know that. And so, ponder that. That's part of your homework for this week. Ponder the times you've stepped out in faith and what happened when you did. Ponder on that this week, this week and perhaps today, 
and the days following this week, you will find others that you have a sense, that have a missing piece, that, that you have something that can help. Maybe it's just giving yourself in friendship. But God, he's calling us. He's saying to us, trust in me, the one who knitted you together in the womb. Trust in me with all your heart. Acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will make your paths straight. Please turn with me now to hymn number 128, which really sums up a lot of this. He leadeth me, O blessed thought. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.